Hello, this is a video for Edexcel Statistics 1. It is the third video in this series and it will cover the mean and variance of the discrete uniform distribution. As mentioned in the previous video, it is possible to derive general formulae for distributions and then use those rather than the standard formulae for expectation and variance. In this video, we're going to look at how to do this for the discrete uniform distribution, which is defined like this. So this definition ensures that every possible outcome gets an equal share, one nth, of the total probability of one. So using the formulae introduced in the last video, we're going to calculate the mean and variance for this general uniform distribution. So as you can see, we have the same probability for every outcome, and that probability is 1 over n. And to find the mean, we need to do x times its associated probability. So 1 times 1 over n is simply 1 over n. 2 times 1 over n is 2 over n. 3 times 1 over n, 3 over n. And so on, all the way up to n times 1 over n, which is n over n. Now, because we're going to do the variance as well, I will also do x squared times its probability uh, in order to use in that formula. So this is 1 squared times 1 over n, which we'd simply write as 1 squared over n, 2 squared over n, 3 squared over n, all the way up to n squared over n. So to find the mean of this uniform distribution, we're simply going to add up all the values in this second row of the table. So to do that, we're going to simply write 1 over n, plus 2 over n, plus 3 over n, and so on, all the way up to n over n. Now you might notice that there is a common factor of 1 over n throughout each of these terms. So if I was to factorise that out, I would simply get 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n. Or, if in sigma notation, this would be 1 over n, sigma, the sum of all the values i from 1 to n of i. Now you might recognise that as simply the triangle numbers. You are adding up the numbers from one to another number, and we know a standard formula for that, which is a half n, n plus one. So now I can simplify this. The n's will cancel, simply giving me n plus one over two. And that's the formula for any uniform distribution with n outcomes. Here it is typed up. So we're going to do this for variance as well um, and what you can see on the screen in front of you is the formula for the expectation of x squared. So what I need to do is the same thing as I did before. 1 squared over n plus 2 squared over n plus 3 squared over n all the way up to n squared over n. And again, you'll notice that there's a common factor of 1 over n throughout. So this is 1 over n times the sum of these square numbers. Now, the formula for that, for the sum of the square numbers up to n, is 1 sixth n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1. So again, the n's are going to cancel, so I'm just going to leave this at the moment as 1 sixth of n plus 1, 2n plus 1. So that's that one typed up. But obviously this isn't the variance yet. In order to find the variance, I need to subtract the mean squared from that. So in, in effect that formula. So here we have the, the expectation of x squared minus the expectation of x squared. And you can expand those brackets and collect up the algebra and get the following formula, which is n plus 1 squared over 12. Now that we've derived both of those two formulas, we can use them on any uniform distribution. So in this example, we're looking at finding the mean variance and standard deviation of a discrete uniform distribution where each outcome is going to be one eighth because we have eight different sides. So to write that as a formula, I would write it like this.
And then I'm going to calculate both the expectation and the variance of this. So n is 8 in this situation, so the expectation of x will simply be 8 plus 1 over 2, which is 9 over 2, or 4 and a half. And the variance of x is simply 8 plus 1 squared over 12, which actually gives you 6.75, 6 and 3 quarters. We are also asked for the standard deviation here, so to find the standard deviation we simply square root 6.75. So that's the solution to that one typed up, and that's the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to look at the expectation of a, f of a function of a variable e of g of x.